Let's take a look at slow motion on the Z90 camera. It's a feature that's on the Z90. I kind of didn't expect it to be really, but uh, slow motion comes in a different, uh, in, in a number of different modes on the camera. So let's take a look at some footage from all of those. First of all, here's some footage shot uh, yesterday down at my usual favorite place to shoot down by the waterfront in Bristol. And um, this is just standard 1080 50p footage so, of course, because it's recorded at 50p, I've got it in a 25 frames per second timeline here. So if I halve the speed of the clip, it's going to look absolutely acceptable. So let's reduce the speed of the clip there to 50% and uh, drag this out here. And you'll see that uh, the speed of the, the clip, when played, if it'll play back happily, looks lovely, totally smooth, apart from the jerks, of course, of the um, it not quite rendering it. You know, full speed. Yeah. So that's, you know, half speed. And it is quite usable for a lot of slow motion footage. And of course, with that, you get fantastic quality. You get the top top quality images that can come out of the camera. So there's your first kind of method. Let's just uh, have, a, have a quick look at that on another clip. I don't know um, whether this will really work in slow-mo, but... Um, I didn't really record these for slow motion, but uh, I thought I'd demonstrate all the methods to you nonetheless. Yeah, so it doesn't, doesn't really work. It's a bit too... Uh, some, some things just, you know, don't really work in slow motion. Right, what else do we have? So the, uh, the second option you have on the camera is the slow and quick function. And the quick function refers to time lapse, but the slow motion... Uh, the slow function means that you can uh, push the camera up to 100 frames per second. That would be 120 for those of you uh, using the camera in um, NTSC mode. Which you can switch between the two on the camera, by the way. It's not uh, region locked. And um, it it records that to uh, a format of your choice. So you have, I'll, if I just bring over my, um, I just put the XML into here. Because what it doesn't do really is tell you on the file what it was recorded in. So if I select my uh, 100p footage here, you can see it's being recorded in slow and quick motion according to the um, type. But the actual format frames per second is 50p. So I recorded in 100, uh, the, the capturing is at 100p, but the format here is at 50p. And you can, you've got a choice between 25 or 50p or, you know, all the relevant changes again for your region. What that means, of course, is that um, there isn't any sort of extra stress on the bitrate of the codec. Uh, so a lot of people come, I've, I've seen a few people online say, well, this, this records in slow motion, but it only does it at 50 megabits per second. And this, but that's absolutely fine because it is only recording still at 50 frames per second maximum. The capturing and the rendering is done on camera at 100 frames per second, but the format of the file that it's laid down into is 50 frames per second. So you don't get any loss of quality in that sense. So let's just um, go back to sorry, go back to my little XML viewer thing here where I put them and just have a look what clips I did at 100p. So I did uh, clip 25 of my slow-mos at 100p. All right, so clip 20 here. This is um, recorded at um, 100 frames per second. But it's captured into a 50 frames per second file. So again, because I'm in a 25 frames per second timeline now, um, I can, of course, capture these into 25 frames per second clips initially. So I don't have to do this step. But I tend to keep most of my footage at 50 frames per second because that's a lot of the time how I want to view it. And you get, it just has that really nice sort of extremely smooth look. It's just something I personally like. Uh, but um, it depends what look you're going for, and it wouldn't really work in a kind of to, to produce anything sort of uh, film looking. You know, just it just looks a bit weird. So let's change the clip speed again and reduce this down to fifty uh, percent. And now, of course, you're dealing with something that's a quarter of the speed, and this is still really good. 
a really good quality clip, you know, so it's not bad, not bad really, because I mean, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty slow that. <laughs> That's really slow. <laughs> I don't honestly see that you're going to necessarily, I like what this guy does with his hand each time he lands, he kind of flicks his fingers out. Um, I, I don't really see that for most stuff, you're going to probably want it much slower than that. And, and so that's recording at 100 frames per second and being reduced to 25 frames per second. Looks absolutely great. But the camera lets you go further and you can do super slow motion, which will give you 250 frames per second, 500 frames per second, or 1,000 frames per second. And the quality reduces quite a bit with each of them. Now, this works quite differently because you've got a limited buffer that you can record to and uh, you've got um you, you just shoot to that buffer and then the camera kind of then pushes it and saves it all to the data card and you've got three different ways of doing that and they're really quite good the first one of course is you just press the start button and it starts recording straightforward enough but of course with slow motion stuff that you're capturing at those kind of frame rates you just can't be sure that the action is going to take place within um, the t you know within the exact amount of time that you have to a uh, to be able to capture. So it also gives you what what's called um, an a, an end trigger mode, so that when you press the button, that's the end of the clip. So you kind of you compose your shot and then you leave the camera, and it's always kind of capturing everything as it's going along. So you know you just maybe you know that somebody's going to run past a certain focal focus point because I was looking at runners the other um, yesterday when I was recording, and uh, you have your end trigger set ready. And then just as the person's run past out of frame, you kind of leave it for about half a second, hit the end trigger, and then it captures the last however many seconds in slow motion. And that works brilliantly. And the third method is end trigger half, which means that it just cuts down on the time it takes to um, re-prepare the shot and capture the shot. But the extra thing you can do as well is that on any kind of uh, sl any kind of super slow motion clip as it sat there so what happens is you you know you as it uh, if you pressed end trigger and you started recording it would start capturing that file to the card and it takes ages because if you've got like a five second clip a thousand frames per second that's like a really big that's a lot that's a lot of time at normal motion so you've got to sit there and wait for all that to be recorded but if you see that the bit of the bit's already gone past that you actually wanted to capture. You can just hit cancel on the screen or on the joystick and it'll just capture the file intact and you don't need to leave the whole thing there recording. Uh, so it just saves you time and allows the camera to re-prepare again quicker for the next shot. It's actually a really nice system. Probably very standard on Sony stuff, but um, for a non-Sony user um, of these type of cameras from, from like me, uh, you know, I haven't, um, I haven't seen that before, so I like it. So let's go back to my little, uh, little click view document here where I've put the files in, because again, as I mentioned, it doesn't tell you on the file. It tells you in the XML, but it doesn't tell you on the file what they were captured at. So I've got a few clips here. Most of them in my capture were at 250p. I did a couple at 500 and I even did a couple at 1000 just so I can show you the quality. So first of all, let's start at 250 and I'll choose a clip. At, uh, that we've got at 250. Okay, so this one is, uh, this one's a 250 and 34 was as well. Da, 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 they'll do, there's just two, just two people running. And this is what it looks like originally. So this was, again, remember, this isn't the best you can get out of a 250. So that's the 50 frames per second clip, though it is only playing back now at 25, because again, 25 per frames per second timeline, just to complicate things, you know. But if we slow this down, I guess I have probably overcomplicated it doing it this way, but just, well, it's fine. If we slow it down, it will of course still look just as smooth but be half the speed. So there we go. I mean, look, I'm going to go just actually go to my color window here because I think I've got a bit, bit, little bit more space there. 
Um, not much on this one. <laughs> not, I've got much more space. Uh, get rid of the clips, I suppose. Zoom in a bit more. But you know, the quality, I think, I, I was personally quite impressed. I wasn't expecting it to be quite this good at uh, 250. And 250, I'm not going to want footage slower than that. I mean, it just starts to look boring if you're going to start doing it much slower than that. That looks great. Look, even a bit of nice, uh, little nice bit of bokeh there as well. And let's do the same on this uh, 34 clip. Oh. Okay, good, good detail. I mean, you can see like the muscles in her legs and the, so the skin on her, on her legs moving and stuff. Let's just slow that down. Bring this out and let's have a look at that. Pretty good. And that's 250 frames per second. Quite usable. You still got your nice kind of, you know, the little tiny bit of, you know, tiny bit of uh, out of focus area here. I think it's kind of works to do that in the, in this with this camera. I've noticed it's if you can get something in the foreground just to give it a slight bit of sense of depth. Otherwise, the sensor is only a one inch sensor. You really can't start pushing too much at distance. Um, you know, so you're right if you're really close to stuff, but other than that, you can't just can't do it. All right. Anyway, moving on, let's quickly have a look at the other clips. Thank you for bearing with me on this long one. And which were the two that I did? I did at 500 p. So 31 and 32 were done at 500 p. So let's have a look at those. 31 and 32. This one's looking like the best one. So here's the original. And let's slow that down even more. If I'd known, if I thought I was going to be doing this tutorial, tutorial sort of thing, I would have um, recorded these at 25p. Right now, let's, hang on, let's make it a little bit bigger in the, by, by playing it in here. And now you can see the quality drop on there. There's no question of that. But you know what? It isn't that bad. I think if you put a quick clip in like that and maybe just tarted it up a bit with um, with maybe just a little bit of sharpening. and it, it, The original clip might have been a little bit sharp. Actually, it was almost midday sun at this point. And um, the detail setting may have been a touch high for these. But you know what? I think it looks all right. And that's at 500 frames per second. I think that looks quite good. Don't know what you think. Nice. And now I'll show you the 1000 because I think people really do slate it quite a bit. And it isn't fantastic, but... Okay, 1000p, 3637. So we've got two clips at 1000 frames per second. Uh, let's have a look. Firstly, at... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're getting seriously slow there. I mean, the nice... <laughs> But let's, we can go even slower than that. It's just mad. And I'll just take it to this here. So yeah, noticeable drop in the in the detail right across the image. Clearly an upscaled image. Um, it's a little bit overexposed by the look. Let me just drop that down, in fact. Just drop the, there we go, that's a bit better.
Not bad. I, this guy hanging around in that in that shirt was causing problems. He's got we've got kind of like moire going on on that shirt of his. I, I think <laughs> it's, I don't know why, but it seems to be messing up the upscaling or something on the um, on the, on the camera. <laughs> but I think you know it is it isn't fantastic at a thousand frames per second, but it's better than I thought it would be. And uh, in the nice nice daylight here although a little bright, it looks fairly good. So, cra crazily slow, but just, you know, it's just, if we step back to the uh, 250 frames per second stuff, you know, re really nice. Definitely usable. So, yeah, there we go. There's a quick look at some uh, slow motion footage. If you'd like a copy of any of these, let me know. They're only short clips. I uh, can happily upload them. Uh, these are all straight out of camera. I've done no grading on any of them whatsoever. This is exactly what you get out of the camera. And um, if you found the video interesting, if it helped you uh, make your decision on uh, purchasing, well, then let me know. I don't know. Let me know or just let me know what you think in, uh, in general. It's always good to hear from you in the comments. And uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. I just noticed we've uh, finished this video with his with his bot with his shorts clenched between his bot. <laughs> spin on, spin on. In fact, there we go. Let's finish it like that instead. <laughs>